making an increasingly widespread way to try to bring about political change in the world? Yes, it is. In the technical sense, uh, terrorism is being used more today. And when I say technical sense, I mean terrorism with a capital T, the professionals uh, operating in the Mideast, uh, in Central America, and so on. But terrorism with a small t is uh, the name of the game in uh, uh, applying force to achieve your ends. Mm -hmm. On the larger scale, in uh, war, uh, the name of the game is to break the enemy's will. In order to do that, countries uh, have resorted, including our own, uh, to some very terroristic uh, activities. Mm -hmm. And it'll be kind of fun to discuss that because the two things merge, uh, terrorism with a capital T and terrorism with a small t. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you suppose has given rise to this increase, let's say, in the last five to ten years? I think because it's effective. Um, uh, and the United States, in losing out in Vietnam uh, with the fall of Saigon uh, ten years ago, signaled the rest of the world that they were somewhat less cohesive uh, than before in their uh, foreign policy development and application and more vulnerable to uh, acts like that. For example, the Tet Offensive mm -hmm. in, uh, in essence was a terrorist, an act of terrorism. It, it was not a, a principally military act and it had the desired effect by a demonstration of uh, fanatic um, attacks uh, against limited objectives. The effect intimidating through the media into the United States uh, was uh, effective in accomplishing the objective, namely weakening uh, our uh, resolve about the war, weakening the attention to the issues, and deciding you know we should pull out. And Walter Cronkite at that time making his famous declaration. Mm -hmm. Is there a connection between the people that were involved in the peaceful movement, in the peace movement, in terms of ways of bringing about political change, and those now involved in, in terrorism. Have, have those that had tried through peaceful means to bring about change gotten frustrated and moved over? Is there a connection at all there? Well, to a degree, uh, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, mm -hmm. and where you have uh, rightist, absolutist governments, you have uh, a, a, a susceptibility to terrorist activity, uh, and there are a number of those. Um, where you have a leftist dictatorship, particularly a communist one, there is not much vulnerability to terrorism because the internal um, ruling is by terrorism, and there is, and this is very significant, a global uh, backing of terrorism whether it be red or black, whether it be left or right, by the Soviet Union and her surrogates. That's in terms of doctrine, uh, the, the, the supplies, uh, safe houses, all of that. Whereas in the West or on the free side, it's a piece by piece operation, usually uh, defensive. Mm -hmm. Senator Jeremiah Denton, a Republican of the state of Alabama, is with us this afternoon to talk about the topic of terrorism. He has introduced in Congress several pieces of legislation which provide ways to combat terrorism, and we're going to be talking about the details of those. And find out what you think that uh, Congress and the administration can do to take care of the problem and what their pro approaches should be and whether or not you think they've done enough. You can dial those phone numbers on the bottom of your screen and join us this afternoon with the senator. Senator, last fall, Secretary of State George Shultz called for uh, support of U.S. military action against terrorism. Have we seen any uh, move in that direction, and is there growing public support for it? Well, there is, was a specific uh, set of um, quotations by the media of Mr. Shultz and Mr. Weinberger. I have discussed with them uh, how much disagreement truly exists between the two of them. There is very little. Uh, you can be quoted in such a way as to mm -hmm. indicate more than there is. The, the, rather than dwell on what they said each, uh, perhaps it's more useful to talk about the issues they're trying to address. Schultz is trying to say that the United States can't continue to look at the world as an innocent child and, and think that in order to protect its interests, its well-being, well -being, its security, even its survival, we can deal with the world as if it's innocent or even use a uh, marquee of Queen, Queensbury rules in the way we box. Mm -hmm. There may be times uh, in dealing with a, a team that is playing not only hardball but dirty hardball 
that you might have to do something dirty too. And we have done dirty things. Uh, Sherman, uh, in marching through Georgia and setting fire to the cornfields and so on, that was an act which, with a small t, can be called terrorism because the object of it was to inflict on some starvation to intimidate a larger number. Uh, when we bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the atomic bombs, uh, we were inflicting an act of terrorism with a small t mm -hmm. because although we killed a lot of people, we were trying to intimidate an entire nation not to continue with the defense, which will have cost even more lives. Uh, so terrorism is applied sometimes in a moral cause, in a moral way, but it is still dirty. It's dirty ball. Sometimes you have to play that. We, in the bombing of Europe, for example, uh, Bremen, uh, Hamburg, uh, Berlin, Tokyo in, in, in Asia, killed more people with our conventional bombing, innocent people, than we did with the two atomic bombs. Most people don't know that. But there was a reason. The rationale in the case of um, uh, the, the countries, the, some of the cities in Europe, one of the games we were playing was, if you don't stop sending the, B, the V2s into London, which they started, indiscriminate bombing, we will wipe out one city after another. We played that game. It's a dirty game but one which was forced upon us and one which was um, resorted to as a last resort. And like war or any other act of force, you shouldn't resort to it if there is a, an alternative. Mm -hmm. If there isn't, then if the application of the force is a lesser uh, immoral act than not using that force, if it's going to result in more harm not to apply the force, then I guess the decision should be to apply it. Senator, our first caller this afternoon is from Arlington, Virginia. Good afternoon. How are you today, Carrie? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Uh, Senator, I want to ask you, um, this, uh, this coming uh, month or so, first I want to ask you what your feelings are. Do you consider the African National Congress, the ANC, do you consider that a terrorist organization or a freedom-fighting organization? And what is your vote going to be on the Anti-Apartheid anti Act going through the Senate? Well, okay, I, thanks. Senator, go ahead. I wouldn't want to uh, mix the two. Uh, I'm against apartheid. Uh, I'm for leaning on the government to uh, be much more liberal than they have been. Uh, ANC is another matter. That started out as a legitimate organization uh, trying to apply, you might say, uh, uh, terrorist means uh, to accomplish their objective. You could have called them freedom fighters originally. Uh, there is no question as a result of hearings that we had, uh, one uh, uh, witness uh, at which was murdered immediately after testi testifying, a man named Slipani, who had served through uh, the time in which the ANC was a good organization into the time in which it was not. When he blew the whistle on that organization, along with others, he told me he might be assassinated, uh, or he was sure he would be. And uh, I was uh, criticized for trying to grandstand by granting him extra security, but uh, truly uh, he was assassinated uh, very shortly after he got back to Africa. So ANC uh, is now a red uh, infiltrated uh, instrument and uh, good patriotic uh, South Africans are being used as useful idiots in the uh, communist I ideological um, uh, jargon. and. Um, so we have to look at the, the question in detail and, and very deeply before we start generalizing and correlating carelessly. Los Angeles, good afternoon. You're next. Hello, is this, uh, am I on the air? Yes, you are. Go ahead. Oh, hi. hi. Yes, Senator Denton, very nice to talk to you. Uh, my uh, concern is in Nicaragua. They have imported the PLO, the Iranians, the North Koreans, the Libyans, et cetera, et cetera. Most of these countries, uh, we all know, export terror uh, and, and, as you say, professional terrorists. Now, as easy as it is to get into the United States through the Mexican border, and since Nicaragua is on the land mass, uh, uh, what do you think of this? I mean, I myself am very worried about this. In, right. my, in my view, your concern is very well placed. Um, Nicaragua is not only important uh, in its own sense as um, a strategic uh, uh, funnel for externally infiltrated mischief against uh, Costa Rica, uh, Honduras, 
and El Salvador and other countries in the area, and we have much specific information about that. A tremendous buildup of um, conventional military forces and terroristic activities against the countries named. But aside from the fact that Mexico uh, would be the next uh, place into which uh, those uh, communist infiltrators would, would penetrate and control, aside from that, Nicaragua as an issue is an issue which is in line with the issue of our failure in Vietnam. Uh, the Soviet uh, change from con uh, conservative uh, chess to a radically aggressive chess in Afghanistan. Uh, the uh, almost unheard of atrocities going on in Southeast Asia, Cambodia and, and Thailand as the communist vultures fight over the human and natural resource spoils there. Uh, in that sense, in the broader sense of the United States' inability to protect its own interests in the Mideast, too, don't leave that out, uh, the other nations looking on at us, particularly those in Latin America, are going to be very, very much affected, I believe decisively affected, by how much the United States keeps herself together in terms of bipartisan foreign policy and solidarity of development of policy with respect to Nicaragua. If we don't do a good job, I'm afraid we will have much stronger enemies uh, in terms of their activities and successes, and many fewer friends who will be afraid uh, uh, to, to, to befriend us because of our not giving the Shah of Iran a place to die after he uh, did almost all the things we wanted uh, to liberalize in Iran. Senator, we'll talk about one of your bills after we take this call from Groton, Connecticut. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, what do you like, Admiral or Senator better? Either one, sir. I, I, either one I is like fine. I like Admiral better. <laughs> And uh, as being uh, one of the few uh, Roman Catholics uh, in the Senate, and I know you're very conservative. No, not very, but you are conservative. Uh, do you, how do you compare the Iron uh, Nation and the Klan with uh, the Freedom Fighters? The which nation? The, what they call within this country the ultra-conservatives, the Iron oh. Nations. I oh, yeah, Aryan uh, nations. Yeah. All right, yes, and the Ku Klux Klan. There's no question that in the United States itself, uh, Bill Webster, the FBI director, is uh, authoritative and correct when he says that there has been uh, somewhat of a noticeable rise in the activities of the right-wing uh, organizations. I won't say the Ku Klux Klan is necessarily included in that, but some of the others are, the neo-Nazi organizations. Uh, uh, they have been more active in the United States. I would have to say that generally, though, to get a better feel for the significance of terrorism, one has to look beyond the borders of the United States at what's going on against our interests, how they affect our interests, those acts of terrorism elsewhere. I happen to believe that in the United States itself, communist-directed uh, terrorism is being kept to a minimum to keep us uh, uh, unknowledgeable and, um, and sort of asleep about it. Senator, one of your uh, bills most recently reintroduced in Congress would permit the jailing of Americans who help international terrorists. To what extent would that cut down, would that affect the actual spread of terrorism? Well, the bill to which you refer, I think, was originally Senate 2626. Yes, originally, last year. Right, last year. And when it came down from the State Department, it was an example of something I think was, uh, that was rather roughly hewn. and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if that, I, I don't know that Secretary Schultz had a personal hand in it, but uh, it was a matter of the Secretary of State being authorized to designate uh, certain nations as terrorist nations, mm -hmm. and then the United States uh, would be able to punish individuals in the United States who uh, supported, uh, uh, tr trained, or in, other, in any way or, uh, uh, augmented uh, mm -hmm. what those people were trying to do to prepare and uh, effectuate uh, terrorism. The problem is um, uh, which nations and, and should it be the, only the Secretary of State and, and what um, uh, could he do about it? What mm -hmm. could the United States do about it? It wasn't that uh, uh, worked out in detail and we're working that one over again. And I believe you'll see, I, I, I've been praised by left wing, uh, a rather liberal um, newspapers in the United States for trying to work that one over and get it smoothed out. And I, I believe we're making some progress mm -hmm. on that. Monterey Park, California. Go ahead, please. Hi, how you doing, Kerry? Good, how you doing? Fine, thanks. Good. You know, uh, Senator. Sir. I read your book, uh, 
open hell with in session. I wish more Americans would read it. I think it would give them some insight into the enemy we're fighting. But my specific question was with regard to Nicaragua. I have a quote here from Thomas Borgay, the interior minister of Nicaragua, made to uh, Alberto Sur, a former member of the government who has since been deported and exiled. And Mr. Sir quotes Mr. Borges as telling him personally, quote, we have Nicaragua, soon we will have El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica, and Mexico. And then he says, one day, tomorrow, or five years, or ten years from now, we're going to take five to ten million Mexicans, and they're going to have one thing in their mind, cross the border, go into Dallas, go into El Paso, go into Houston, go into New Mexico, go into San Diego, with each one of these people having embedded in his mind the idea of killing 10 Americans, end quote. And I'm wondering, like I read this in a newspaper, and I've heard numerous other quotes from Mr. Borgay, such as, our revolution goes beyond our own borders. And I'm wondering, being that you're in Congress, and you deal with people every day that seem to tell you that, uh, that there's no threat from Nicaragua, that these people are misunderstood social democrats, and that if we, you know, uh, have more of a soft policy towards them, they'll moderate their revolution. Uh, I'm wondering if you have any in insight into why the people who hold this view in blatant disregard for evident reality just don't seem to want to accept the fact that we're dealing with ideological enemies that are utterly intractable and implacable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Well, your question uh, hits the heart of the matter and um, having lived among them for eight years and been a student of this subject my whole adult life, uh, I feel the same frustration uh, that you feel. Perhaps I feel it more acutely because among my colleagues uh, whom I respect, um, in general, they are too diffused among the 7,000 issues that are on the floor uh, each of which incrementally affects the well-being of or security of the United States. But the one you're talking about is one of the major uh, survival uh, issues of our day. And I find uh, too many of them uh, terribly ignorant. If it walks like a, talk, a communist, acts like a communist, talks like a communist, and is aggressing at this time, and all of the evidence that you have just mentioned is uh, backed up many times over by defectors wh whom we have interviewed, the, the London station chief of the uh, DGI, the Cuban intelligence, uh, uh, defected. And his testimony was uh, corroborated by others. And he says that the Soviet Union uh, is running DGI in in intelligence through a KGB officer, and other sources say that, and uh, that uh, they have been given pretty much carte blanche to do what they are doing uh, if the number one target can be uh, uh, argumentatively uh, de uh, demonstrated to be the United States. The ultimate target that is destabilized is the, is the United States by whatever they're doing in Nicaragua or wherever. It's very, very clear, and yet we have funnels of information coming up from down there uh, through uh, the same kinds of spokesmen who were uh, confusing our, our, some of our media people and some of our politicians during Vietnam. The same thing's going on again. And yet the truth is very, very clear. Uh, so I share your frustration and that's why we were so happy that we did begin to clear up some of that confusion by the recent joint hearings between the Foreign Relations Committee and the Judiciary Committee on this subject of terrorism. And those were fairly recently so we can, we can talk yes. about that. New York City is next. Go ahead. Hi, S.C. Spain. Hi. Uh, good evening, Senator. Would you, if you have a pen, Senator, I'd like you to just write this number down. Uh, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, caller. Oh, four, four, one. Uh, I live in Manhattan, a very large Hispanic uh, area here. A lot of people from El Salvador, Nicaragua, and I've been paying attention to what's going on. Senator, see if I'm wrong on this. I think half the problem a lot of the problem that has to do with uh, Nicaragua terrorism is the disinformation that we're receiving here in the uh, country. I honestly believe that people understood and realized if you took a poll and you said to people, would you rather see uh, Nicaragua under a free government or would you rather see them under a communist government? The poll, of course, would be overwhelming for a free government. Uh, the PR work is very, very bad from our side, from the American point of view. 
uh, the misconceptions, the disinformation, uh, what's left out, what reminds on said 2020, just did a 2020 thing uh, last, uh, when are they on, Wednesday, on uh, Granada, uh, Grenada, and the uh, secret documents that were found in Grenada. Now, it's very good that they did this, but they've been there for four months. Why wasn't this snapped up by our networks? What I would like to do, if somebody would get in touch with me, I think what we should be doing, and I think it's tremendously important, we should begin a verbal assault. We should start bringing the truth to the American people. And the way I think we should do that is people who understand what's going on should get together. And when things happen like uh, Representative Dellums uh, making friendships with uh, Marxists like Bishop, and these things come out in papers, they should be brought to the attention. Uh, the phone should be ringing on CBS, ABC, NBC. Why aren't you snapping this up? Why aren't you reporting what's going on in those Grenada papers? Why do we have to wait for uh, a special report from 2020? This was a big, major story. And I believe that in order, and uh, Secretary Weinberger said this, that we'll never be able to really go to, uh, into battle or, or stop anybody until we have a consensus of the American people. And we're never going to have a consensus of the American people until they realize what's going on. Once they do realize, there will be consensus. And this bull tube is the only thing that can bring it to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just think it's tremendously important that I have some very, very, what I think is good ideas of how to put, by using billboards in New York City, for instance, with uh, uh, sloganeering type things. But uh, I would put this, the liberals don't have uh, a, a, an intellectual leg to stand on. Come out and fight, mm -hmm. and then sign it uh, yourself, uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, Bob Walker, guys that understand the problem, that know what's going on. Challenge the left, challenge them to get up before the people of America, get up on those televisions, say why you think there's no threat in Nicaragua, you, and we'll say why we think, and let the people make up their mind. That's what we need in this country. All right, thanks, New York. Senator. Well, there, I, I, I agree with uh, all you said. There is an effort on the part of people like you, uh, and that includes people like me, uh, to do precisely what you said. I, I found that I was limited in what I could do within the Senate. Uh, therefore, I tr founded a foundation to undertake uh, to join other foundations uh, in trying to do precisely what you're talking about. Uh, the media are not full of dishonest people. Uh, they're full of a number of misled people who are still trying to prove uh, that they were right about Vietnam, about which they were dead wrong. Uh, and that is uh, an, an inhibiting um, factor. Some of that is eroding away as younger people come along or as more deeply conscientious older people are, are saying, mea culpa, uh, we not only were wrong about Vietnam, but in some cases we lied about Vietnam in the Tet Offensive. We got on a team uh, to tell lies. Now, uh, the government is not innocent of misleading either, but we've got to realize that we're in a ball game at a certain uh, juncture at this point where we better go back to bipartisanship in looking at foreign policy, uh, be we conservatives or liberals or Democrats or Republicans, that this country is beginning to lose its footing in the world, not only as a leader, but as a friend or as a credible enemy. We are being perceived, uh, perhaps somewhat accurately, as a rather paralyzed giant that is ripe to fall off uh, the tree like an overripe plum and fulfill Khrushchev's policy, uh, prophecy, we will bury you. He didn't mean overcome us with nuclear weapons. He meant that we, in our sloppy thinking and uh, presumption about not being able to live with prosperity and not being able to look things in the eye, uh, would simply uh, weaken until our interests were eroded to the point and our credibility were, were, was eroded to the point that we couldn't stand. And uh, I, I believe you're right. And I have found that through my own foundation, the National Forum Foundation, uh, you can hammer away at a network, hammer away at a commentator, and they're generally honest people. And uh, we need more doing that. Uh, as you know, Ted Turner and Senator Helms are, are trying to do something about t getting a network. Uh, that would be more objective and not as uh, pre-biased uh, as, as the three of them are. Now, there is no question that they are. There are books like uh, The Two by Lef uh, Lefebvre uh, concerning Vietnam. That sort of thing still goes on. 
Uh, I don't think they're un-American. I don't think they're dishonest. I just think they're biased and wrong. And until they become objective, until uh, they stop slanting it in terms of that um, bias, we're in trouble. Because the only way you can get the news to the people is through television, the principal way. And the president can hammer away, the secretary of state can hammer away, and you can do it multi-administrationally. And if they want to twist it up, uh, even you and I are going to have a lot of trouble uh, figuring through about 80% of it. I, I, I found myself deluded uh, many times by what was put not only there, but sometimes in the New York Times, uh, sometimes in the Washington Post. And they're, they're full of good uh, newspapers in the United States, and not all the people on either of those are wrong. But uh, there is a problem, and we do have to uh, rise and meet the challenge. En enough good men doing nothing will result in this country going down the drain. I don't mean that I'm omniscient. I don't mean that I'm a, a hawk. I just mean that we better start getting back to bipartisanship and brotherhood in the way we look realistically at our problems, or we're going down the drain, and we'll deserve it. Eugene, Oregon, you're on with the senator. Uh, hello, Senator. I uh, have been listening to the show today, and I wanted to go through a few of, of my own opinions uh, on this topic. I was a Vietnam veteran, as were a half million plus other Americans, uh, over a million. And when you were in Vietnam, you were there as a uh, airplane pilot, a bomber. And my area of concern when I was in Vietnam was doing target selection in the area that you were bombing. Now, I was in Vietnam several years after you were shot down and, and captured. And I was in Vietnam at the time when Ho Chi Minh died. And you were a prisoner there at that same time. And I was located in South Vietnam the day Ho Chi Minh died. And as I was going down, I was in the, on the same day both in Da Nang and down at Tan Sinh and in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City now, and I saw a large percentage of the population was wearing black armbands on the death of Ho Chi Minh. Now, from your comments, I get the impression that you learned nothing from our experience in Vietnam. <laughs> it's unfortunate that you were a prisoner there because I feel that you failed to live with the people and see what they were doing. Now we're repeating the same mistakes in Central America that you, you were forced to suffer by in Vietnam. You use the word communism as though it were a disease. And I see this repeatedly from people who, they use the word conservative. I don't consider myself liberal or conservative, but I don't view communism as a disease. I view it as an ideology, a theory, that is growing because our country doesn't seem to want to be brave against it as an ideology. Your approach is as though if you shake hands with someone who is a communist, you're going to somehow catch something on your hand. So out of fear, we must draw a fence and not raise a hand. Okay, thank you, Eugene. Senator Denton. Well, I, I appreciate your opinion, sir, and uh, it is just as valid opinion as my own. Uh, however, in speaking as a Vietnam uh, veteran, uh, your views do not represent, according to national polls, uh, anything like the center of gravity of the Vietnam uh, veteran population. I would say that um, uh, Eighty-five percent of them diametrically, at least, disagree with you, with maybe some uh, uncertain. Uh, yes, uh, if a communist, uh, a real communist, shakes hands with you, uh, you better check to see if you have your ring and watch left after he draws his hand away. Uh, they are set by their own uh, manifesto, by their own intent, by their own tactics, by their own plans, by their own past actions and, uh, and ideology. Uh, to take over this world, if necessary, by conquest. They deny uh, the dignity of man. They say s the state is it. That's the very opposite of our explosive declaration that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Not from God to the king to the people, but from God to the people, and the government is of the people, by the people, for the people. If you don't think that's different from the way the communists rule, uh, you better go visit in Hanoi like I did when those people would come before my my little uh, cell and open that peephole and make the sign of the cross to let me know they sympathized with me and where I watched a woman after she was gang raped by the soldiers in the complete uh, uh, freedom of the sexes over there uh, bleeding almost to death in, in the moat behind my cell uh, on Tet. I watched them get doped up on Tet uh, which uh, 
it wasn't at all the kind of propaganda that you read about. I don't know who made them wear the armbands in South Vietnam. I, I know they did mourn Ho Chi Minh's death in, in North Vietnam, but and right after he died, they tried to bury the brutality of treatment with us, with him. He died on the 3rd of September, 1969. Almost immediately after that, the treatment changed and they uh, pretended only a few guards and soldiers were responsible for torturing us and they asked me how they could improve the, the treatment and they apologized to me thinking that Nixon was, President Nixon was going to find a way to win that war and try them as war criminals. And when I left that country, sir, and landed on our soil in the Philippines uh, on our air base and said, God bless America, I said so in Thanksgiving that we had persevered after many errors, which uh, wars are prone to be full of, and had won that war and we were, had won our cause and kept those people free. We, had, we didn't, and I lament that, and I think a lot of Vietnam veterans do. Charleston, South Carolina, good afternoon. Yes, um, thank goodness, uh, Senator Denton, we've got you in Washington. I wanna thank you for what all you've been through and know that, let you know that we certainly appreciate you. And the caller before, he had his facts down so well as to where he was that day, I just doubt that he was there. Uh, my concern is South Africa. I, I agree with you that I'm against apartheid, but I just am so afraid that if we push the South Africans uh, too far, that they're going to turn and go towards communism or go towards communist as friends. And um, when I think of 20 million blacks against 5 million whites, I just feel like that if they take over, which with the vote they would take over, that it would be a, a one government, and, you know, one man that just stayed like a dictator. I don't see how five million whites could ever win out with 20 million blacks. And that really concerns me because of the uh, ceilings that go through there, because of the products that South Africa has that America needs. And I just... I know it sounds like I'm for apartheid. I'm not. I just don't know how they can uh, straighten out their problem. I think it is a real problem, but I don't know how they can straighten it out. And I just think maybe with them knowing that America is not, uh, you know, is against it, but not just pushing them and strangling them to do something. Uh, one more thing I'd like to ask you. I really resent people blaming the 240-something Marines that died in Beirut on our president. Uh, our president sent our troops over there to maintain the peace. They seem to forget that. Three other countries were in on that with them. They lost men. Their, their country people didn't uh, accuse them of having killed their French or their Italian or their English. But Americans want to blame the president for those men getting killed. And I'm sure it hurt him as bad as it hurt the families. So to me, it was a terrorist act. It was something that was going to happen whether you tried to stop it or not. All right. Thanks, Charleston. Senator Dunn. Well, let me uh, add to what you said about the Marines in Beirut, something that relates to Kerry's earlier question. Uh, why is terrorism increasing? We made it perfectly clear through opposition within Congress and through media criticisms, editorial and news slanting, that, you know, the, the, the theme of our approach should be, well, if we get any Marines hurt, we got to pull out of there. One more Marine killed and we got to pull out of there. In other words, we invited the terrorists to do that which um, uh, we shouldn't have invited them to do. Uh, in other words, uh, if you've got several major nations in there with peacekeeping uh, uh, token forces, uh, what is inhibiting the others uh, from continuing the war and, and to go toward peaceful solutions is what will those larger nations do if we were to attack these troops here and wipe out this pe pe peacekeeping force? If you destroy that question, if you supply the answer, we'll pull out, then you've negated the whole uh, footing of the investment in the first place. I'm not saying it was a wise or an unwise move. I'm saying that whatever efficacy it had was destroyed when the media and critics of uh, the policy uh, made sure that the enemy knew that all they had to do was to kill a, a, a bunch of them or some of them and we'd pull out. That's not the way uh, you, you should go into a situation like that. You should go in with unity. And again, that's why we tried to have these joint hearings. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to dictate, I'm trying to get people together to study the problem so that we can work toward better policy within the Congress and for the administration uh, and also get a better understanding out there in the public, a consensus in which that policy will float, be understood and supported in a spirit of unity. And we're a long way from that. Thousand Oaks, California. Good afternoon. Yes, you are, ma'am. Go ahead. This is Kathleen from Thousand Oaks, California. I, I first want to say thank God for Mr. Dent. We're all very lucky to have him here. And I wanted to ask why there are so many legislators that are anxious to reward illegal aliens with legalization. If those legislators live in the places where they are swarming across the border, it is very frightening. They are coming across so fast, and the few men that we have on the border are almost helpless. And it's, as a suggestion, they really should close the border and take an absolute head count, because so many of these people coming across are only coming across for monetary reasons. Stunner, uh, they openly tell you they don't want to become Americans. And it, it's just a, a, a real detriment to our country because of when they get legalized, they will form a very strong voting block that will certainly change our way of living. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, caller. Thank you. Senator. Well, the refugee problem uh, will become uh, multiplied um, hundreds of fold if um, we do not um, have effective policy uh, causing Nicaragua to inhibit her activities against her neighbors. Um, the obviousness of the need in terms of, uh, of, of what has been said, the tremendous buildup of, of uh, massive uh, conventional uh, arms way beyond their need to defend themselves against their neighbor. And they say they're putting them there because they think the United States is going to attack them. It's a vicious circle. Then we have these guys over there saying you can't even uh, put uh, economic sanctions against Nicaragua. You can't help the true freedom fighters. I went to Managua, the man mentioned Borje. When Borje was trying to visit the United States, uh, he uh, was not permitted to come in. He was going to lecture uh, on college campuses and talk to newspaper editorial boards, and I think the president was right in saying uh, we don't need that right now, because uh, he would have gotten the publicity and further confused this issue, and the man was a communist from outside. He was an enemy. At that time, they went on the air in Nicaragua and said, aha, the President of the United States is a right-wing nut. He won't let people in his closed country. Uh, we will take anybody into Nicaragua and let them get to any uh, group they want to to talk. I was on my way to Central America with no plans to go to Nicaragua because I knew I'd be paraded around and shown what they wanted me to see. But when they said that, I changed my plans halfway down there, requested entry into, into Nicaragua, thinking I had, knowing that I had them on the spot. They let me in. I spent all afternoon with Pedro Shimora, the heroic editor of La Prensa. You talk about a, a, an heroic journalist, that's one, that young man. And the other was a man just elevated to Cardinal Obando y Bravo, the archbishop down there, both of whom had opposed the Samosistas, the, the Samosa regime when it became uh, absolutist and oppressive and were persecuted for that. Now they're opposing the Sandinistas who have betrayed their promise. Now, why our media can't get behind an honest journalist, a brave journalist, why our church can't get behind a man just elevated by the Holy Father uh, to the rank of cardinal and listen to them instead of listening to this baloney that's coming out via their propaganda sources, I can't understand. It seems transparent to me. I'm sorry I got that uh, emphatic, but uh, I believe that very much is uh, at stake here. Senator, in the Mideast, we've had another incident of an American being taken hostage just very recently, David Jacobson. How do we respond to an incident like that? The more we don't respond with unity, the more this is going to happen. You asked, Kerry, uh, is terrorism going to increase? Yes, I believe it will, particularly against our interest overseas. Uh, we recently uncovered over this weekend, and I'm not clear on the details yet, a plan to blow up the old executive uh, office building next to the White House a plan to blow up part of the Naval Academy and other important facilities. Uh, I believe that up until now it has been wise for them not to make the United States that wary about it. The countries in Central America and in Latin America in general are very familiar with terrorism because it's been used against them by communists with Uruguay, the most beautiful example, a relatively liberal government being forced to become uh, oppressive against terrorists such as you know, a terrorist lobbying uh, 
mortar shells into crowds, they would have to respond by some um, pretty tough police uh, measures. Uh, there's a book about that, the Urban Guerrilla Handbook, can, which can be found by millions of copies all over the world, including in Detroit and New York and uh, San Diego, as well as uh, Hamburg or wherever you want in the world. They have a plan. They're executing that plan. It, this isn't uh, some kind of a, a communist uh, under every rock joke. I'm not talking about this because I want to become uh, prominent or, or, or extended as, as some kind of a spokesman. I'm up here because this country I know is in trouble and I understand to, to some degree the nature of that trouble. Our people don't understand it. Our government doesn't understand it. And when a leader, be he Republican or Democrat, in that White House tries to do something about it, Congress, in its ignorance, and swayed by the winds of the media, has not been supporting those policies. We have been drifting since about 1967. If we continue that way, we're lost. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you're next. Go ahead. Good evening, Senator. Uh, my concern is about the Middle East, and the question that we all hear as far as terrorism is concerned is how do we combat terrorism? How do we defend ourselves in face of terrorism? But the question that has been always avoided for some reason is what caused terrorism? What's, what's the reason and what's the principle behind that? We never had uh, uh, terrorism prior to 1982 invasion of mm -hmm. Lebanon. Uh, we might have, but as, not as far commercialized as now. And uh, I'll give an example. One of your hearing, in your, the committee that you're hearing, uh, there is a professor by the name of uh, Noah Alexander, who is known all over the Arab world as an anti-Arab, and who represented one side of the story as far as terrorism is concerned in the Middle East. And uh, by giving you those kind of information, then the consequences and the result will be one-sided. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not going to go in details. I, I know you know better than I do as far as the subject is concerned, but I'll let you comment on that, please. Thank, thank, you very much. thank you for the call. Well, I, uh, again, uh, I'm not am omniscient. I don't pretend to be. I don't know all the answers, but I have had uh, contacts uh, from all sides of that question. Uh, we have uh, contact with the PLO. Uh, we have contact with the Israelis. We have contact with the uh, Saudis. We have contact with the Jordanians. I think some progress is being made over there. And you're right, uh, if the cause is just uh, terrorism, it can be considered uh, with a small t, uh, having been conducted by every country uh, in the world. Uh, the professional part of it, the technical part of it, the part with a capital T, uh, the kind that comes out of the Urban Guerrilla Handbook and is now being spread in, in some unique ways in places like India, which are, aren't even in the Urban Guerrilla Handbook uh, modus operandi, modi operandi, uh, is a relatively recent uh, uh, global political phenomenon. And the important thing to note is, uh, in the Middle East, if terrorism supported by our enemies, uh, be it uh, justly caused or not caused uh, from the terrorist point of view, if that is fed in terms of arms, safe houses, uh, whipping them up into a frenzy, and we lose access to that oil, this country and her allies are down. We, we cannot recover from that kind of loss. So as far as survival, which is the principal reason people have a government, we've got to have our uh, eye on the survival of that vital interest, the oil fields in the Mideast. To the degree that terrorism threatens that, we have a vital interest in uh, coping with that. And we're not uh, coping with it realistically right now, principally because of the, the definition of paralysis, as I previously indicated. Senator, then we go to Los Angeles next. Go ahead. Yes, I'd just like to ask the Senator a couple questions about Vietnam. Um, Senator, I, I am uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran myself, and uh, I, I was just hearing a couple of uh, callers ago that uh, he was sort of sympathizing with the communism. Uh, well, you let me tell you something. Um, when they got a, 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 when I was over there, they were they were actually booby booby, booby trapping little kids. We had a bomb away, Senator. Them people are not human being, beings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the call. That's right, son, and God bless you. They were uh, tying uh, two artillery, 13 and 14-year-old kids, 
uh, so that they couldn't retreat. And all they could do was, uh, was keep loading that weapon and firing it. We don't do that. Uh, we, in spite of the fact that we have resorted to terrorism in, man in the manner uh, to, which, uh, to which I alluded earlier, this nation has contributed more to the march of civilization in the world more altruism, more generosity than any other nation in history, and none of my communist captors would argue about that. It's true, we have, and yet we have done some things in policy that were not uh, entirely uh, perfect by any means. But it's the best country to come down the pike, and communism is probably the most obnoxious uh, system to ever come down the pike. The opposite of ours in terms of this being one nation under God, they say there is no God. And in the case of civilization as well as the United States saying you've got to have family, they say commune. They don't practice it, but they, officially that's what they say. And when necessary, they do break it up for the good of the state. We have free enterprise. They have the opposite. They, they have no compassion because they don't believe in God. They think that they can do it from the state, that man can do it through the state with no help from God. We believe the opposite. So, and, and then in terms of their international orientation and their citizen-state relationship, it's the opposite of ours. And how people can keep saying it's just a simple, different system, all you've got to do is be nice to them and they'll be nice to you, uh, they're dead wrong. They don't understand. And they've got to read history some more uh, before they do understand. Annandale, Virginia, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, Senator Denton, you spoke about journalism and uh, I would like to speak about Christianity at this point. Uh, in the last six weeks, I've been home from work and I've uh, been watching television avidly. And there are some stations on the cable network, and not only the cable, that are very, very, uh, I guess, far right uh, Christian, quote, ministers. You know, I'm a Christian, and I'm a fervent Christian. But these programs, and certainly not all of them, but at least five of them, uh, are led by ministers who are so far to the right they get into politics matter of fact they're more into politics than they are into god at this point and it's ludicrous and i'm frightened and i'm frightened for this country mm -hmm. uh within the last six weeks i've watched program after program that uh, they beseech for money and they uh, don't talk Bible, they talk politics, or they equate uh, the Bible with politics, and I'm quite sure have uh, some kind of political ambitions or something. Uh, is there anything in this country, any laws in this country, or is this situation too new uh, to be able to uh, qualify these people when they go on and make statements that are just absolutely ludicrous? All right. Thank you, Annadale. Senator Well, uh, I agree that they, they uh, go for money uh, because it takes money to uh, produce the programs. It takes money to maintain their operations. I agree that they're into politics now. Um, I won't try to defend each of them as being perfect, but I will say that on the other side of the coin, uh, compared to the money that they get, uh, pornography, and uh, which is very much into politics. If, if you look at the kind of magazines uh, that are into that, they're into drugs in the same magazines, and they're into politics. They're into be nice to Nicaragua. Uh, let's don't deploy nuclear weapons. Let's freeze nuclear weapons. Uh, that gets into Congress. That kind of stuff, uh, which is proven now to be responsible for a lot of families breaking up, for a lot of kids uh, uh, being assaulted and abused, uh, something that we don't need. We have enough problem with our natures without having uh, something as diabolical as that, which attacks the dignity of women, uh, which uh, distorts our own tastes, uh, which should be coming from natural God-given appetites and twist them uh, to something that isn't uh, natural, nor is it socially uh, maintainable. Uh, why not? Uh, when the government starts protecting that thing, sort of thing, and you have a, a commission uh, from the president coming out some years ago and saying there's nothing wrong with pornography. We don't ought to encourage it. It helps uh, jazz up uh, jaded tastes and so forth in uh, married people. And that isn't true. Uh, it's been proven untrue. And I hope the present commission uh, by the attorney general uh, straightens that out. So if our government begins to make rulings to keeping kids out of uh, from praying in schools, which never had been the case before in our history, and other rulings which the Christians and Jews 
and uh, Muslims for that matter, or anyone who believes in God, consider to be offensive where the kids' values in schools are being uh, produced by the government contrary to those religions and contrary to the parents' desires, why shouldn't they get political? Because the, the opposite of uh, what their beliefs are have been have become uh, too much the political norm. So I don't uh, agree with you generically, uh, but I, I, don't, I can't uh, categorically disagree with you in the sense of saying that they're all uh, perfect, and certainly I am not. San Diego, good afternoon. Yes, uh, Senator, um, I'm, I'm really quite glad that, uh, that your efforts to try and stir the country up are not going to succeed because there is a lot of divided opinion about uh, what to do in Central America. I'd like to point out, you know, that where you lose credibility is your, your polarizing attitude towards communism. A communist is a communist is a communist. That the atrocities in Cambodia are equal to the quote-unquote uh, totalitarianism in Nicaragua. Uh, there's no bloodbath in Nicaragua. There's no evidence at all of the kind of, of statements that are being made by the administration and yourself this afternoon. In fact, I was fortunate enough to be able to see on C-SPAN a couple of weeks ago, I was able to see the ambassador of Nicaragua, the ambassador of El Salvador, and the roving ambassador to Central America being uh, examined or interviewed, uh, testifying before a congressional Senate committee and it was only upon questioning that they admitted when finally asked, well, if Nicaragua is already a full-blown Marxist-Leninist totalitarian state, what is the point of the Contras anyhow? Because they can't win. Finally, upon being put to that question, they had to admit, well, actually, they're not really a full-blown Marxist-Leninist totalitarian state yet. We think they're going to go that way. Oh, Senator Biden said, well, maybe then there are other ways that they can be uh, convinced not to go into a full-blown Marxist-Leninist state. Well, yes, that's a possibility, finally the ambassadors admitted. I think that the kind of polarizing attitude uh, loses credibility in terms of developing a realistic solution. The Nicaraguans are not committed to being Marxist-Leninist totalitarian. There's no bloodbath going down there except the Contras who I'd like to point out do not even fight the army of Nicaragua. They fight innocent, helpless civilians. They kill old people, young people, rape them, slaughter them, torture them, slit their throats. I mean, we've seen pictures of it. You know, there are no angels. There are no freedom fighters down there. Okay, hold on, uh, San Diego, and let's have the senator respond. Thank you. Uh, there are a number of pictures. Uh and so on. Uh, the question is, where is the truth? I didn't say that what is happening in Cambodia and uh, Laos is what's happening in Nicaragua. They're two separate situations. I said that the tragedies happening in both countries are partly a result of uh, United States uh, and the free world's inability to deal uh, with the spread of communism. In Nicaragua, you do have the block system, the same one that, that's used in uh, Moscow, the same one that's used in Havana, uh, which requires uh, intimidation of young people to, and, and they're informing on their elders. You have a whole uh, structural governmental apparatus that I think you are innocent of knowing about. I am not. I lived among it for eight years and studied about it a lot of my life. Uh, they are uh, oppressing against their own people. If you had a free vote in Nicaragua about which way uh, things ought to go, it would come out the way I saw uh, w on one of the major networks, which they seemed to miss. They were showing a scene in an orange grove in which uh, displaced teachers, because of an agricultural crisis, were having to clean up uh, the harvest. They were taken out of their schools by the government, put in, in, in the groves to pick some fruit. And uh, as the cameras went by, they were smiling, which the, the guards were making, the security people were making sure they did. One guy, as he was picking the fruit, whatever kind it was, I don't remember whether it was oranges or bananas, whistled the song yesterday. Now, I knew what he meant because that was the kind of signal we used to try to get back via television when we were in prison. A subtle message he was trying to get back, smilingly saying, we wish these guys weren't here. We wish we fr were free like we were before. I was down there and talked to the archbishop I told you about and the journalist I told you about, and I'm in constant contact with people down there. I'm not trying to dictate facts. I'm only asking that we look closely at this and find the truth. That's all I'm asking. Burbank, Illinois, go ahead, please. We've got about two minutes left. Hey, Carrie, thank you. Uh, 
your program is the most important thing that's ever happened for this country. Senator Denton, uh, a couple of callers have talked about the people being the important thing in this, as far as the country is concerned. I agree with that. I think the people should be involved. The trouble with this country, if you want the people to get involved, you're called a communist. I would like you to uh, think of a few names and tell me which of those people were communists, which of them were not communists, which of them were or are supported by the people that really put them in power. Somoza, Batista, Ho Chi Minh, Mao, Pinochet, Marcos, Castro, Chiang Kai-shek, Gaddafi, the king that he replaced. I was there. Ayatollah Khomeini and the Shah of Iran. Which of those are communists? Which of them are capitalists? Which of them are guys that we put in power? And so on. All right, thanks. Well, Ho Chi Minh was a communist. Um, he spent many, many years uh, in the Soviet Union learning about communism. Uh, some of the leaders in the Sandinista government, which you mentioned, are communists. Uh, they say they are communists. They say they are Marxists. Uh, they receive all of their aid uh, from Cuba, uh, via the Soviet Union, from uh, the terrorist, uh, the 5,000 Cuban uh, uh, communist military advisors. Uh, all through the country, they get uh, supplies from communist organizations all over the world, including Vietnam. Uh, I, I don't know what it, it takes to convince you that they are communist. Uh, some of the other men you named, uh, I, 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 I'm sure some of them were not communist. It was a pretty fast list you gave to me rather suddenly. Senator Denton, our time is out. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Carrie. Thank you to our viewers, as always. Tomorrow at this time, Congressman Coulter, Democrat of the State of Pennsylvania, will be here to talk about Social Security COLAs. So do join us for that. Have a good day.